So when we look at these two um, graphs, we notice two different things. One is that for graph two, the period is bigger, right? So we need period is bigger. And also the amplitude is smaller. This is the amplitude. Right? <clears throat> so to get a smaller amplitude, you just pull the um, uh, the spring, so here's a spring, and you pull it um, not quite as far because the amplitude is your maximum x max, right? So you don't want to pull it as far, so you start the, cl the mass closer to equilibrium because you want this maximum to be smaller. Now for a bigger period or smaller frequency, or omega, then you can look at your equation and say t is equal to, <clears throat> excuse me, 2 pi square root of m over k, or omega is equal to square root of k over m, however you want to do it. But if you want this to be bigger, then of course you're going to want your mass to be bigger. You can also recognize that when you put a bigger mass on the spring, it takes a little longer to kind of come up and down or restore back to where it's going to go. So to get from graph one to graph two, we need to increase the mass on the spring and we need to make the amplitude smaller. For this one, <clears throat> the equation of motion, that's your x, this is just about taking derivatives, or you could have the equation for this already set up. So your velocity is just the derivative with respect to t of 5 cosine pi t. The 5 comes out, so that's 5. Derivative of cosine is minus sine of omega t, but then we have to take the derivative of what's on the inside, pi times t, and so that gives you pi. So this gives you minus 5 pi sine of pi times t. So that's your velocity. <clears throat> your acceleration is then the derivative of the velocity. So then you're going to take the derivative of this, your minus 5 pi comes out, taking the derivative with respect to time of sine of pi t, which means you take minus 5 pi, take the derivative of sine, which is cosine of pi t. Then using the chain rule, you take the derivative uh, with respect to t of what's inside pi t. The pi again comes out, you take derivative of t with respect to t, and that just gives you 1, so this is minus 5 pi squared cosine pi t. Um, all right, this next one says the mass on a spring has a period of 4 seconds. If the mass is 3 times larger, what's the new period of oscillation? So again, you would use your equation for the period 2 pi square root of m over k. If we have m times 3, then notice your new period is 2 pi square root of 3m over k, which would be square root of 3 times this 2 pi square root of m over k, or it's a square root of 3 times bigger. So when I take that, this was my original period of 4 seconds. So when I take square root of 3 times 4, that gives me 6.9 seconds. And that's my new period. It's not 3 times bigger because the 3 is in fact under the square root. Um, and then for this last problem, this is showing position versus time. So this is x versus t. So the potential energy is at the max at the sort of the extremes where it's stretched or compressed fully. And the maximum kinetic energy will be maximum speed. So that would be biggest slope. So in fact, my maximum kinetic energy is going to be here, 
right? Those are the spots right where it's crossing the axis, so that's marked by X's. The where it's stretched or fully compressed will be at peaks or valleys, so potential energy max is at a peak or a valley, so we'll mark that with a dot. So that would be these spots here and probably there. So where it gets stretched the most, um, stretched or compressed fully, so this would be sort of um, probably stretched and then compressed, and then um, the maximum kinetic energy is right when it's coming through equilibrium because that's when it's moving the fastest.